name is Sam. I'm the Marketing Communications Manager here at Fairy God Boss, and Fairy God Boss is the largest career community for women. Our mission is to improve the workplace by increasing transparency. We offer a ton of great free resources like anonymous company reviews, job listings, articles, virtual recruiting events, and so much more to help you succeed throughout your career. We will be taking questions throughout today's webinar, so feel free to use the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen. Note you can leave questions as yourself or anonymously, so don't be afraid to ask anything that comes to mind. We're also recording today's webinar, and we will be sending it out in a follow-up email along with Liz's contact info and some other information that she has to provide, so be on the lookout for that. You should get it in your inbox by the end of the day today. Here with me today is Liz, the co-founder and editor of Course Report, the most complete, most visited resource for students researching coding boot camps. And like the title says, today is very much Boot Camps 101. We're going to give you all of the information you need. So if you're interested in boot camps and looking to pursue one, you'll have all this info in your back pocket and can make the best decision for you and your career. So with that, Liz, I'm, I'm going to pass it over to you for now. Thank you so much, Sam, and thanks for having me. Um, I'm Liz, great to meet everyone. Uh, I literally spend all day, every day, <laughs> thinking about coding boot camps or talking with alumni. Uh, we started Course Report in 2013 when there were about 20 boot camps uh, around the US, and we kind of saw this potential for, you know, a third party resource for students, a Princeton review of coding boot camps, if you will. And today we have over 600 schools in our directory and over 40,000 alumni reviews. It's been really cool to kind of see boot camps evolve and grow and meet the needs of hundreds of thousands of students uh, around the world. But that growth also just means that it's even more difficult, more difficult than ever for you to kind of narrow down your options and, and choose the best boot camp for you. So I'm really happy to be here today, take a few minutes and give the Fairy God Boss crew a quick overview of coding boot camps. You know, we'll talk about how they can be a great place to change careers, what your options are. We'll cover the most popular couple of questions that I get about boot camps, which are are boot camps worth it? Um, and is a boot camp right for me? And we'll also just touch on our suggestions for choosing the right boot camp. Excuse the uh, horns outside. I'm literally on the streets of New York. Um, so I'm assuming that everyone generally kind of understands what a coding boot camp is. But just so we're on the same page, you know, we're not talking about like a Code Academy or a Udemy course. We're talking about um, immersive, intensive, three to six month programs that are very hands-on, project-based, and they're taking beginners from zero or 10, maybe to 60 in digital skills like coding, but also in data science, data analytics, technical sales, UX design, and cybersecurity is the most recent kind of category that we added to our site because there are so many cybersecurity boot camps now. So anyone can do a coding bootcamp and be successful afterwards. We've talked to alumni who were poets, lawyers, project managers. I just talked to an aerospace engineer who became a UX designer, um, nurses, delivery drivers, and all of these people went on to get interesting jobs in tech. But coding bootcamps are typically for adult career changers. So the typical coding bootcamp graduate has about seven years of work experience and the average bootcamper has a bachelor's degree already. So I'm going to make an assumption that this might be pretty similar to the folks that are on this call today. Um, people can also tell me their, their backgrounds if they want to. But um, so, yeah, so we're not talking about necessarily like a college replacement but definitely kind of a, an alternative for grad school or for an MBA. That's kind of how we think of, about boot camps fitting into the larger landscape of, of education. And um, just one more fact about boot camps: there are about 25,000 graduates of these programs each year in the US and Canada. And the number one question that I get asked all the time is, are these boot camps actually uh, you know, getting their students jobs in tech? The tuition at these schools costs about ten to fifteen thousand um, dollars. That's not trivial, so you know it's a boot camp worth it. So I thought we could start there. 
Um, wonderful. Okay, already getting a couple of folks with their with their backgrounds. Um, a parent on a career break. Talk to many people, kind of doing re-entry into the into the boot camp or into the tech world through a boot camp. So it's definitely the right background there. So um, okay, so let's start with this question: Is, is a boot camp worth it? Um, so we do a couple of industry reports each year. One of those is an alumni survey. I love this survey because we get so much information about who's actually attending boot camps and if they're actually. Uh, successful afterwards. And when you just look at the aggregate data around boot camps, the answer is yes, boot camps are worth it. Um, a majority of boot campers, about 83%, say that they have gotten a job uh, since they graduated that uses the technical skills that they learned in a boot camp. So that's good news. Um, the average starting salary is about $70,000 overall for the average boot camper. That totally varies with location and background. Um, can go from like $40,000 in Florida to, you know, $150,000 in New York and San Francisco. Um, and salaries also increase as alumni kind of stay in tech and get their second and third jobs. So in that same survey for grads that have more than one job, their average starting or their average most recent salary is about $90,000. Um, and overall boot camp grads see a 54% salary lift. Um, that's a stat that I love because it's pretty consistent across gender, race, education background. Um, that, seller, that salary lift is still there. And then finally, for those students that do, you know, want to get a job and get a job after they graduate, um, almost three quarters of boot campers find a job within, you know, three months of graduating. About 20% of boot camp grads have a job offer before they actually graduate, which is kind of cool. Um, but yeah, so about, we kind of think of a boot camp as lasting about three months and then the job search being about three to six months. So when people ask me, you know, is a boot camp worth it? Uh, those are the factors that I'm kind of looking at and what it boils down to is that a boot camp is outcomes focused, right? These are not accredited university degrees, um, that are being like judged by an accrediting body. So we judge them based on their ability to get their students jobs. And they're actually quite good at that. Um, and another way that boot camps are different, I just wanted to point out is that they tend to be more diverse than traditional classrooms. So about 40% of boot camp alumni are women compared to like 17% in a traditional CS degree. That kind of flexible, lower cost, um, lower opportunity cost education just lends itself more to folks who are traditionally left out of the tech job market, people of color, women. Um, I've talked to several women who like started in a CS degree, uh, walked into class on the first day of school and were like, nobody here looks like me. I'm changing careers. This is, or changing majors. Um, and then they find a boot camp like 10 years later that makes it possible to get back into tech. So um, there's some cool stories there. And there are also even some boot camps that uh, like Hack Bright Academy and Grace Hopper Academy and then Ada Developers Academy, which is in the Pacific Northwest, that are all women. So as you're kind of calculating your potential ROI, uh, just remember that a boot camp costs about thirteen thousand dollars, and your starting salary will likely be in that like seventy to one hundred thousand dollar range. So that's one way to kind of answer that question for yourself. You may also want to be changing careers because of some other, something other than salary, or something in addition to salary, quality of life, or work life balance, or just you know working in a career that you love. So. Um, that can definitely factor into that equation. So the next most popular question that I get asked is, is a boot camp right for me? So like I said before, you know, folks from all kinds of backgrounds attend boot camps every day and they work hard and get jobs. And there's really nothing um, about like a specific, you know, undergrad major or um, like, you don't have to love math and science in order to, you know, go to a boot camp and be really successful in tech. Um, you're not going to need a certain like degree or GPA in order to get into a boot camp. Instead, you'll need to show grit and willingness to learn and fail, and you know, show that you like have the determination to actually make this career change. 
Uh, and so consider your own background and your own career goals. And my advice is to choose a bootcamp that's kind of aligned with those. So there are bootcamps for complete beginners like Flatiron School, and they'll give you pre-work to get you up to speed. Um, there are others like Codesmith or Hack Reactor, which want you to definitely do some self-study before you apply, probably even build, you know, build something on your own before you apply. And then there are even some like data science bootcamp fellowships, we call them, um, like Insight Data Science, which are actually for PhDs that want to transition from academia uh, into the corporate world. So a little bit more aggressive there, but um, I will, I'll put my email in the follow-up of this webinar. Feel free to email me. I'm so happy to help you like narrow down your options based on your own background and what you're looking for. There are a lot of, a lot of options out there. Another thing is to think about your learning style. So in the classroom at a boot camp, like you're going to get some lecture, right? You may learn like maybe today is all about learning about what React is or something like that, but it's a lot of projects. You're going to be building clones of apps, building your capstone projects to kind of build up your portfolio as you go into the job search. So if you hate learning that way and you want that like traditional classroom where the teacher is at the front of the room and you're, you know, learning and then taking a test in order to show what you learned, then a boot camp is probably not going to be the right fit for you, or you're going to have to like grin and bear it uh, through those three months and kind of learn in that way. Um, and then lastly, just consider your availability. So obviously the quickest way to make a career change is with a full-time immersive bootcamp. Either you are currently unemployed or you quit your job and you just do this 60 to 80 hours a week, you know, a, a hardcore. But if you're currently at a job that you really like or you can't afford to quit your job, totally fair, um, you want to keep your job while you're learning to code or learning some new skill, then you may want to do a part-time boot camp. Like um, BrainStation and Full Stack Academy both have part-time flex options. Um, a part-time boot camp can also be great if you are not quite in a position where you want to quit your job and like get a new job at a new company, but maybe you want to get a promotion or you want to add data analytics skills to your toolbox and like move to a new team in your company. A part-time bootcamp can be great there too. Okay, cool. So I want to get into the Q&A because I want to hear your questions. I'm getting really distracted by the chat. Um, but uh, before we finish, I just want to pass on four tips for making a successful career change with the bootcamp. First is choose the right school. There are a lot of schools, obviously, and it can seem daunting to choose like five of those to apply to. Um, narrow it down by location. Even if you're looking for an online bootcamp right now, obviously with COVID, that is uh, most of these bootcamps are online. Um, even if you're looking for an online program, make sure that they can help you with your job search in the location that you are interested in. Um, narrow it down by programming language or career track. You know, do you want to focus on front end development, full stack development, data analytics? That's the second criteria. And then finally, find schools that fit your time commitment. If you can only commit part time, then you're choosing from a more limited pool. So once you've got your, your you know, few schools that fit your needs, do your research. Course report is a as a review site, we have 40,000, more than 40,000 alumni reviews. So obviously I'm gonna say, you know, read your read reviews, of course. But uh, also before you just sign over your tuition check, we recommend visiting schools if at all possible. Most coding boot camps hold um, host info sessions, meetups, intro classes at their campuses, take advantage of those. If you can't visit the classroom in person, obviously right now most schools are, are online, join an, an online info session, schedule a video call with the admissions team. It's a really good way to understand the teaching style and kind of the vibe of the classroom. Um, three, ask about alumni outcomes. Uh, this is a big question that you should be asking about in the admissions process if you know getting a job is important to you. Uh, there's an organization called CIRR, CIR, which is um, an organization where students or where schools report their outcomes each quarter. And that's one place that you can find these. But if the school isn't part of SEER, then 
ask for their placement rates, ask where their alumni are working, how long it took to find a job. Um, if your goal is to get a job in tech, then you should choose a school with a track record of doing that. And finally, for do yourself a favor and prepare beforehand. Um, boot camper, like you could, I guess, go into one of these schools completely cold and a total beginner, but boot campers who have had some experience with code, even if they didn't work as a developer and just taught themselves something before they went to school or before they went to the boot camp, we see it in the data, they get higher salaries. So do the Udemy classes, do Code Academy, do any pre-work that the school gives you. And good luck. Cool. That's my spiel. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Liz. That was a lot of great information. I saw two questions come in already, but if anyone else has more questions, please leave them in the Q&A now. Uh, but first question is from Gia. She asks, are there any scholarships, grants, or fellowships available? Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yes, definitely. Almost every boot camp has scholarships, um, available, they'll probably be between like 500 and a thousand dollars discounts for women discounts for military veterans and, um, and folks who are underrepresented in tech so definitely look out for those, I can also include a link in the follow up to we keep it track of all of the scholarships that are out there for boot camps. Um, there are also other options. So in the last year, so many boot camps have gotten approved for like workforce development dollars. And so we've got a good roundup of like 40 workforce development programs in states around the US that, um, that you can use that money to cover your boot camp tuition. Um, so I'd be happy to share that. And then most boot camps also will offer like financing options, payment plans. There are there are lending partners, you know, specifically in the boot camp space uh, that basically like take into account that you're not going to be able to pay your loan back for three to six months after you graduate because they know that's how long it takes to get a job. So um, so there are those options, but yes, there are many scholarships from the schools themselves, um, and then from uh, potentially from your, your state. Also, if you are a military veteran, uh, many schools will accept the GI Bill now. They've gotten approved to accept the GI Bill or something called Vet Tech, which um, basically you can pay for your boot camp tuition and use one credit of your GI Bill education um, uh, credits. So yeah, there are a lot of options there. Awesome. And now I know I've heard of some employers covering like MBA costs for employees. Have you ever heard of employers covering boot camp tuitions Definitely. for students? Great. Yes, we have. Um, it's always worth asking. Like there are definitely, you know, if this, if your company does give you some amount of like education money, then sure you can put it towards a boot camp. There are also some, I've heard of companies like partnering with a boot camp in their city or their state to do like an internal boot camp just for their employees. So like that's a cool option as well. Um, and yeah, you can always ask. We've we've talked to I've talked to a couple of people who got their employer to pay for a boot camp. We actually have a like sample letter on how to pitch that to your boss. Um, so I can include that too. Yeah, that definitely might be an option for some people in the audience. I saw them talking about their experiences and maybe leveling up. That might be a really great way to kind of get that cost covered so you can still level up without having to worry about the finance side of things. Awesome. Uh, we had another question come in from an anonymous attendee. They just wanted to know if there are any other like pros and cons to doing a part-time versus a full-time boot camp, other than the ones you already discussed, of course. Yeah, I mean, you know, the length of time is really your biggest, uh, the biggest difference, right? If you do a part-time boot camp, it's going to take probably twice as much time, like six to 12 months to actually do the boot camp. And then, you know, you add on another three to six months to get a job. So you're looking at more of like a, a you know, closer to a two-year commitment versus doing the full-time, you know, immersive um, boot camp, which should take like six to nine months for the whole thing. Um, so there's like that opportunity cost there. 
it's also, you know, there are less of the part-time options. If I were going to do a part-time boot camp, I would look for a school that like successfully teaches people full-time and then has a part-time option or a flexible option. So um, the ones that I mentioned, Full Stack Academy and Brain Station are two that, you know, have like really reputable uh programs and and have great outcomes for their full-time students and so then um doing that flex can can be helpful but i mean it is different because you're not kind of like committing fully for you know 60 to 80 hours a week you have to put that time aside block it off on your calendar like stay committed throughout you know um throughout like a full year which is for me would be more difficult but also, if you're motivated enough to keep your job and do a part-time boot camp, then you're a special person. So that's great. <laughs> great. Um, so now can you tell us a little bit about what the application process actually looks like? I know it probably varies, um, but any kind of general details that carry throughout all of them? Totally. So, okay. So first, um, I kind of think about the application process in five steps. First, we talked about doing, you know, you narrow down your, your options. Second, you're going to start prepping for the admissions process. And um, that the admissions process takes about one to three months to get into a boot camp. Um, so start planning that out, like maybe like two to four months before you want to actually like enroll. Um, there are, and then I would start teaching yourself. So there are a lot of ways to start learning, you know, basic coding skills. If you want to make sure that you are covering the right material and doing it quickly, there are a lot of boot camp prep programs. And a lot of the bigger boot camps will like offer these prep programs. And then, you know, maybe they're like $500 or something. And then they put that towards your tuition. Um, there are also some free prep programs as well. And, and those can be great for like getting into the school that you want to get into on the first try, or just like knowing that you're, you know, going to be super prepared for that school. And then you want to apply to the boot camp. So, um, Generally, like the first part of the application form is, or application is just a super simple form, maybe a really short essay about like why you want to do a boot camp. You're not going to like be paying application fees to apply to a school. So, you know, we recommend always applying to a handful of schools. And then every school is going to have a different application or like interview process, but you can generally ex uh, expect to do an informational culture fit style interview a take-home coding challenge if the school is quite selective. Um, and then, and that could be either like coding something in JavaScript or HTML, CSS. It could also be uh, like a logic question, like an LSAT question. Um, and then you'll do, probably do an in-person interview with the, you know, member of like a bootcamp, like an instructor at a boot camp, something like that, um, and talk through your coding challenge, and then you'll get notified if you're accepted or 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 not. And then, um, and most boot camps you can apply like twice if you don't get accepted the first time. And okay. then, yeah, research you know research your financing options, and then once you get in, work really hard. <laughs> of course. Um, Rachel asked a question that I think you get quite often. Um, she wants to know what are the guaranteed advantages of remote boot camp versus teaching oneself? There's so many online courses and programs mm -hmm. and YouTube videos that will teach you how to code. Um, so what is the benefit of the boot camp over all those other things? Totally. So most boot campers do start by teaching themselves. I don't think I've ever talked well, that might not be true. I think maybe every once in a while, I will talk to an alum who has gotten a job after a boot camp and literally like went in totally cold. And they must have just worked so hard during the during the boot camp. Um, but like they knew nothing about coding beforehand. Most boot campers, though, start by teaching themselves. And I totally recommend that you should. There is a ton of free curricula on the internet um, and in books. Most folks though, like will get to a point in that journey where they just need guidance, mentorship, that like structured curriculum and career support if they are really like trying to change careers. So, I mean, you know, if you look, if you talk to people in the uh, 
you know, in the programming space, like plenty of people have taught themselves to code and are like very proud of it and have very, I'm sure, fruitful careers, but they sorted through a ton of material on the internet. They found their own mentors. They built their own projects. They chose, you know, what was important um, in that process. And it probably took them at least, you know, two years. Um, so yeah, I would say you should definitely start with those online courses, online, you know, maybe certificates. Certificates might be more for like, if you are on the other side of a boot camp and you want to get like certified in something specific. But um, yeah, start with those free options always, whether that's through a boot camp or or on Udemy or you know Udacity, any of those. Uh, and then once you decide that you actually like what you're learning then it's, it might be time to a, apply to a boot camp. That's the other thing that those free online programs are great for is that like, you know, if you wanna, if you go to a computer, if you want, if you go to a programming boot camp and you get there and realize that you don't like this work, then like there are options. You can become a product manager afterwards and like use that, you know, I've, I've talked to people who have done that in the past and use that knowledge of, coding to like be a better product manager but if you like realize that you hate the work then that's not a great time to find out at the boot camp so um do you know try to teach yourself beforehand with free resources and it'll it'll help in on many levels and then on the employment side of things i mean how mm -hmm. are employers looking at students who graduate from boot camps versus people who do online courses and then I guess versus people who just teach themselves how to do things. Or the other one, the other you know type of person is someone that does a traditional computer science degree. And like the trade-off there is really that that traditional computer science degree, you're gonna learn so much. Um, you're gonna learn a lot of theory. You may graduate and not like actually know how to deploy a, an app or like put a website live, but like you did learn a lot of theory. And then on the bootcamp side, you're kind of learning the exact it's like the exact opposite. You're learning like so much work in practice, maybe less of the theory. So I, we actually talked to a lot of employers um, who have hired bootcamp grads and they generally like the employers that do hire bootcamp grads are really impressed with just the fact that they are like adult career changers who made the actual decision to like do this career change themselves, right? Like they weren't deciding to do it um, when they went to college, like they, they kind of had the grit and the motivation to do it themselves later. Um, and so I, we're seeing more, more employers like really accept bootcamp grads and, you know, hiring them more than ever now. Um, compared to the online courses, I'm not totally sure. I mean, because we don't talk to a ton of employers that have hired someone from just like doing an online, an online course. Um, that might be better for like if you are currently working in a job and you like want to show your, you know, your boss or your manager that you are ready for some more responsibility or like ready to move into another role. Um, but yeah. I think that answers the question pretty well. Um, another question we got from an attendee was uh, kind of about the, the course report, I guess, aspect of it. But how do I find alumni to talk to and how do I know which of the boot camps are the best? And I guess maybe the best for them is really the right question. I know, right? There, I get that question all the time. What is the best boot camp? And I, I totally understand it, but it so depends on who you are. Um, so yeah, the best bootcamp for you really depends on doing that, doing that research. I mean, you can definitely look at, you should, you should certainly read through reviews from alumni, look in those reviews for, you know, people that sound like you have a similar background to you. Um, if you read reviews that are like, you know, overall, like the school was so hard and I was totally out of my element, like, and you have no experience coding, like that can be a great, just, you know, additional piece of information as you're doing your, your research. 
Um, but wait, what was the first part of the question? How do they find the alumni to talk to, to like oh, get yeah. a better sense of it? Yeah. I mean, LinkedIn is one great way. If people like people put their bootcamp on their um, LinkedIn profile. Um, and then uh, if you, we do a ton of alumni spotlights on course report and we'll usually either uh, link to their LinkedIn's if they wanted to get questions from, from alumni or from future students. And that's one great way to find find alumni. Most people are totally happy to chat about, you know, their experience and, um, and, and give you advice. We try to ask all of those questions and those alumni spotlights, you know, what do you wish you had learned? What do you like, was the bootcamp worth it for you? Um, what was your research process like? Um, I just talked to someone and it took him, he self-described himself as neurotic in his research process, but it took him like a year to choose the best bootcamp for him. I don't think it should take a year, uh, you know, more power to him, but uh, it should take, you know, it shouldn't be like a overnight decision or something that you decide like the first time you visit the school's website, like it should take, you know, two or three weeks. A year. That's quite, that's like choosing a college. <laughs> I know I had so many questions for him. Cause like anyone who does, anyone who does research for a year about boot camps, I'm like, you're my, you're my people. I want to, we got to talk. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so funny. Um, and then it looks like we just have one more question. Um, otherwise I think we're going to wrap up after that. So if you have anything that we didn't yet answer, please drop it in the chat or the Q and a now. Um, but Liz, this is a question that we discussed, um, offline as well, but you talked about an income share agreement mm -hmm. and then deferred mm -hmm. tuition. Can you talk about the differences there? Totally. So as you're doing your research, you will probably come across these terms, income share agreement and deferred tuition. Deferred tuition means that students are paying no upfront tuition or maybe like a really small deposit. And then they start paying their set tuition amount once they graduate and find a job. Um, so you would expect to see a fixed total tuition cost that you would pay to the school like in installments when you graduate. An income share agreement is really similar, but just a little different. So an income share agreement, we call it an ISA, um, means that students agree to pay a percentage of their salary to the school for a set amount of time after they graduate and get a job. So depending on the school, that percentage can range from like 8% to 25%. You may be sharing your income for a year or four years. Um, and there's, there's some complexity here. So my advice is always like income share agreements and deferred tuition are cool because they obviously... Like, they reduce some kind of barrier for students. You don't have to have that $15,000 upfront when you, when you enroll, right? So that's great for accessibility. They also align a student's incentives with the incentives of the school. So the school doesn't get paid unless the student gets a job, right? Um, so there is some cool like incentive alignment there. But uh, they don't, they're, it's, they're kind of in like an, a regulatory gray area. There isn't a ton of like legal, uh, they're just they, like legislative um, information around them. So we just always suggest that students like take a little bit of extra precaution, do that additional research, read the terms and conditions um, and verify with the school to find out like, does the school require that you're earning a minimum salary before you start paying tuition? Like if you just get a job that pays like $20,000, are you going to have to pay an income share agreement back? Like just ask, ask questions about the ISA before you sign it, but it, they can be. And I've talked to many students who they were totally instrumental in being able to even attend the boot camp, And then like, they were really helpful in terms of just kind of offering that it's not a job guarantee, but it's basically saying like, if we don't get you a job, we're not gonna get paid. So it's like nice and reassuring for the student. And then also, you know, was like an easy way to pay that tuition off once they actually got a job. So um, yeah, they're an interesting, watch this space. Definitely an incentive for the, uh, the boot camp for sure. Definitely, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I I think you've answered all of the questions that came in 
through Yay. from the audience today. So thank you so much for your time and giving us all of this great information. As a reminder to everyone here, we will be sending out the recording of this later today, along with some more information about course report and Liz's contact info. I dropped a link in the chat, but we'll also include that link in the email. So if you don't get to it right now, do not worry. Um, but thank you so much to everyone. Hope you have a great rest of your week. Bye. Thanks, Sam. Thanks, everyone.